In case you're new to hockey fandom, this is usually the most boring time possible to be a hockey fan, meaning that there's not a lot really going on, so the most exciting thing we have is trade speculation. And unsurprisingly, you all seem to enjoy those types of videos, therefore we're going to yet again circle back to have some additional trade talk. In this video, we're going to go over a select number of players who could be traded very soon. We'll go over their current situations and which teams they could be representing next. And with that, here are four NHL players who could be on new teams very soon. I know, I know, I definitely teed this one up to be more of a trade-themed video, but I couldn't help myself from bringing up a situation that I haven't addressed in quite a while. In fact, the last time we talked about the Dumba debacle on this channel was last October. And obviously, since then, a lot has changed. Dumba went from being a pending UFA to an unrestricted free agent, still looking for work. And really, most hockey fans, myself included, didn't have a Dumba extension in Minnesota on our bingo cards at all and for good reason, as the 28-year-old struggled mightily last campaign, which was unfortunately when he should have been putting on his best performance. Dumba, who played in 79 contests for the Wild last season, was only able to notch 14 points throughout. Not only did the defenseman have a career low in points, but also in things such as shooting percentage and the plus-minus category as well, besides his struggles on ice. There's also another reason as to why Dumba won't return to the Twin Cities. After the Wild added Kalen Addison to the mix, GM Billy Guerin has set aside cap space in order to sign him and Philip Gustafson. Therefore, Dumba's underwhelming performance and the extenuating circumstances have allowed for him to be in this predicament. Dumba, who just finished out his six-year deal valued at $30 million with the Wild, will likely be taking a decent pay cut on his next contract. However, for a team that's looking for some cheap help on the back end, he could be the perfect solution. According to The Athletic, the Arizona Coyotes seem like the prime destination for this Saskatchewan native. Also, a couple more teams that have shown interest recently are the Dallas Stars and Seattle Kraken. With the send-off to Patrice Bergeron officially in motion, the Boston Bruins have a predicament on their hands, meaning that with Bergeron retiring and David Krejci potentially doing the same, the B are going to need some replacements within their top six. Now, for a while, Mark Shifley was suspected to be on the Bruins' radar. However, according to the Winnipeg Suns, Scott Billick, the Bruins have shifted their focus to yet another center. Elias Lindholm. Lindholm, who was one of three Selkie finalists last year, plays a similar two-way style of game as Bergeron did throughout his career. When comparing other potential players who are or may be available for trade, Lindholm seems like the closest to Bergeron as it gets. According to NHL insider Frank Cervalli, Lindholm, who was given a pitch from Craig Conroy, that involved a long-term extension has yet to respond. Given that was back in June, and there's been zero negotiations reported, it's looking increasingly apparent that Lindholm has zero intentions of re-upping with the Flames. With 64 points recorded in 80 games played, he finished the season out second in points below Tyler Toffoli, who had 73. Lindholm, who is a pending UFA, sports a modest $4.8 million AAV, but will definitely be looking for a pay raise. As I mentioned before, the Bruins have reportedly shown interest. However, a few more teams that could benefit from Lindholm's services are the St. Louis Blues, Columbus Blue Jackets, and the Carolina Hurricanes. Austin Matthews, Mitch Marner, and William Nylander Originally known as the Holy Trinity infused excitement into Leafland that hadn't been seen in years, beginning in 2014 when Nylander first came into the picture. And as we've watched the three grow in talent, they've also been able to accumulate some decent compensation for being the stars they are. However, as most of us know, the way that former GM Kyle Dubas set this team up with bringing in Captain John Tavares, this ultimately wasn't sustainable, meaning that since these players have demonstrated that they're not willing to take less to win, then it's going to be harder to keep them all together, especially with Tavares now on the books as well. As for the Nylander situation, well, 
Let's just say that Nylander and Jean Batch are living remain far apart from agreeing on a dollar amount that works. Nylander, who recorded an impressive 40 goals last season, is willing to bet on himself and is aiming for an AAV of 10 million for his next contract. And while 40 goals and 87 points at that is quite impressive, an article from Fan Cited paints a rather realistic picture. When comparing Nylander's production to his peers, the players that have been the closest are Mark Stone, Timo Meyer, Braden Point, Miko Rantanen, and Matthew Barzal, all of which make under eight figures a season. Also, the writer goes on to wager that if Nylander is willing to sign outside of Toronto, he will receive around $9.2 million a season. If this were to be the case, and Nylander indeed decided he wasn't going to be taking a pay cut, then, as Lee fans would hope, he'd be traded in order to facilitate a return. And just like with Eric Carlson, there's reportedly been interest in Nylander for multiple teams. We've previously went over the possibility of Calgary, Chicago, and Detroit all landing the forward. However, it's obvious that the Blackhawks and Wings are out of the Nylander sweepstakes. A couple of additional teams that could use Nylander's services are the Carolina Hurricanes and the Nashville Predators. The Eric Carlson saga recently had a new wrinkle added to it, as Carlson, who has been spending his offseason in his native country of Sweden, decided to do an interview, which caused a lot of chatter to come about in the hockey world. Now I'm going to have the link to the article below for anyone who wants to read it, but in essence, Carlson revealed a couple of juicy details. Firstly, that he doesn't intend to play for San Jose next season, and that he and GM Mike Greer have been working together this offseason to try and make that happen. And secondly, that alongside the Pittsburgh Penguins and Carolina Hurricanes, the Toronto Maple Leafs and Seattle Kraken have also been teams he's had formal conversations with. Carlson, who captured his third Norris Trophy here recently, was the first defenseman to notch 100 points in over 30 years. As impressive as that was, the fact still stands for Carlson that he's on a team that's undergoing a rebuild. And as Carlson said in the article, he knows he's not getting any younger and wants his best chance to win. Even though obviously the concept of Carlson going to Toronto seems intriguing, it would be hard for Tre Living to pull such a deal off. Considering the fact that Carlson's AAV is still $11.5 million, it would warrant some major salary retention and a third-party team to broker such a transaction. This leaves a potential for Pittsburgh to try and lobby for Carlson's services, who currently have his former teammate, Jason Spezza, working in the front office. In conclusion, it's going to be exciting to see where Eric Carlson ends up, especially considering how pivotal he could be to the team he goes to. If you're new to my channel and made it this far, I'd love it if you could subscribe. And if you're regularly consuming my content, I'd like to invite you to hydrate with Liquid IV by using my promo code Alyssa Hope in all caps. You can receive 20% off and free shipping. Simply click the link below to get started. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.